Hello everyone, welcome to Sunburned Out. I'm to play some Ace Attorney Trilogy PS4, episode 23. Uh, people have been saying that this case is hella long, so... I mean, I'm good with it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do all of it. We're finally at least to the first trial day, so let's get on it. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. Huh? The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Skye, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. My first trial without a Fay helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Why do why do they let them stand next to me? I don't understand. She's a 16-year-old. Oh, this is my uh, advice giver. No, we're 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 in this as a team. She, you know, she has qualifications. Just kidding. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. Cloudy, don't be like this right now. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. Dude, are you kidding, Cat? I'll let you win right now. I'll do it. Don't think I won't. I will choose the path I think is right regardless. Dude, he ran away! I opened the door and he ran away. Good. Don't, don't make noise anymore, then. You don't know what you want. You are completely counterproductive to your own ambitions. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The Coffa Queen? Hmm? Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, oh, caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name. Profession. Now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up! Mm -hmm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, huh? Uh, what exactly does that mean? 
Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? Miss Starr was a detective? Uh -huh. I know who you are. Cough up. Cough up, Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I, su I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block, in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with his knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record, all right. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. Seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? Dude, cat, once more. Watch me open this door, you're gonna run off. Bet your ass. You gonna come in? Come here, Cloudy. Don't just stand in the doorway, you idiot. You lovable, cute, fucking idiot. Hey. Yeah, see I'm closing the door behind you. Now you know you got no way out. Did you know that you were about to trap yourself in here? Were you aware that you have accidentally ensnared yourself in the jaws of my studio? Well, you best get used to being digested. All right, witnesses account. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. Dude, what are you meowing about now, Cap? Nope. All right. Come here. You need to go to the bathroom or something? Why are you going to be like this? You know what time it is? It's time for you to not have to go to the bathroom. That's what time it is. It's also time for you to let me pick you up properly. Uh, I'll be right back. Bella, sorry about this. garish card, yes. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Hey, Sunburn Albano, why didn't you uh, edit out that big blank space of time? Oh, I just... Uh, I forgot. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. Hmm. <laughs> As you can see, there is no room for doubt. Every single one of these characters is suddenly out of breath. <laughs> the key point of your testimony oh, seems to be nothing other than uh, the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. All right, well, we got to press her on her boyfriend because she's got, like, multiple boyfriends. 
I also need to just re-examine my core record stuff. We don't have- we shouldn't have that much to choose from. Oh, we've got a full slot. Okay. Huh, <sighs> alright. Attorney's badge, we got Goodman's ID. Don't think that's worth anything right here. King of Prosecutor's Trophy, don't think that matters. Edgeworth's Knife, could matter. Parking Stub, could matter. Blue Badger Panel. Uh, it doesn't matter, probably. Goodman's Autopsy Report, might matter. Goodman's Note, might matter. Cell phone might matter. Although it doesn't, they just yet didn't say anything about a call yet. Parking lot floor plans. Let me look at these again. Yeah, that's B. That's A. You see through a fence. That's a see through fence. So I wonder if it matters, like, where she was or where she says she was. The security room is where her boyfriend is, so she would be, have been in a parking lot A also in order to witness the crime. I think we start with a round of pressing, though. I just knew a day like this would come. Why not? How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing con inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Starr, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator, and if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. So I'm going to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. This boyfriend? He's the detective? Not that boyfriend. The security guard. The fat boyfriend? You have several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Uh, care to join? The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. Uh, I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. <laughs> the security guard room is in the lot, in A block. Indeed it is. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. Oh, is that where she's saying she was? That would be the room with the security sign. Okay, so if we've pinpointed her location, that's helpful. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B Block. So she was in B Block when she witnessed the crime. Wait a second. When I sense something. She So she was in B Block. She went to visit her boyfriend, but she parked in B Block. The floor plan would not allow this. Right? Like, it, it doesn't look like you can get through the gate. So... Alright, we'll keep that in the back of our mind. What did you sense? You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like... how would you say... Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of a detective's intuition, wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Ooh, what if Mr. Bruce Goodman was her detective boyfriend? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. Then I must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Through the wire fence? Oh, okay. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. Hmm. She's saying through the fence, though, and it is, a fr it is through the fence. Like, you can see through that. She parked in B block. She saw through the fence a dude standing next to a garish car, but...
It's... Her... Is her car the bottom one on the right? Because doesn't she drive like a van? So if she was there, like, she wouldn't have seen all the way. I don't know, I'm not sure about it. I mean, I'll do another run-through and I might try it, but... By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Indeed, it was. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant. I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you are willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter! Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside! That... that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed! A... a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap! I took a picture! In fact... One of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Hmm. Why is her arm out of the sleeve? Why are both of her arms out of the sleeve? But yet the coat is still on. Very confused. Also, isn't that his coat? The detective's coat? Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Lana Skye. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Well, that's not what the picture says, but... Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, <clears throat> yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. Hmm, perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor? So, the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes, in the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. Dude, again, why is the coat not in the sleeve? I don't understand. Apparently it's not his coat Because he's also wearing a coat and it's the same exact coat I'm very confused by this whole thing. I I See It's only a flesh wound mr. Wright. We can make it you said that before anything else Scientifically speaking miss stars testimony is flawless sounds pretty fatal to me What do we do is this it is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. D don't smile like that! Let's just press the witness. 
What are you talking? I've been pressing. I pressed every single thing. I pressed that. 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 Dude, I pressed everything. If I'm gonna think that things are wrong... Then I would think it was this. Because of the parking lot floor plans. Damn it! Uh... save now so that I don't lose any more stuff over this know more about the knife I don't need more I don't need to know more about the knife then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into detective Goodman's chest Murder weapon, usually in Edward's toolbox. Traces of victim's blood. No prints. Would that refute this? Nope! Alright, you got me. I mean, it didn't look like it was super bloody. It only said traces of blood. Well, if the floor plans don't contradict that, then nothing will in this particular one. Death due to loss of blood, one knife wound. Died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. She probably holding her knife in her right. Oh, that's so specific. Dude, it's probably, dude, she's left-handed, right? Show me the new picture. She's, okay, she's opening the trunk with her left hand. I wonder if this is it. Like, is this what we use? I'm feeling good about it. Yeah, that's right. Dude, whenever somebody specifies which hand, that's the lie. I, I should have saw, seen that before. And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Skye stab the victim with the knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Mmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Skye not holding a knife? Oh, okay, that's why? <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet it was still stronger than your ever-feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. And how can you tell that, besides the fact that there's fucking blood everywhere? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph. Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem except you. Oh, he said that, never mind. No problem except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ugh, you got a better idea? Objection. Oh, oh now we're going to do the left-handed thing, right? Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. That's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo size lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. 
Okay, well this is not real life, because this is just how she's telling it, so the knife's in her right hand. But she opened the trunk with her left hand. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Whoa, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Warg! These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder! A serious offense! Unless she's like Kyoko from Danganronpa, she got a reason to wear gloves all the time. Witness, add this to your testimony. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. Well, but obviously, we're gonna present evidence to contradict this. Or press it. Let's press it first. See if we get a hint. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like driving gloves? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Arrgh. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. Oh, you're just gonna say that. Don't worry, we got this. We got this. Alright. Like, it's obviously the final thing, so maybe I should have waited till we got there. Right, wait, yeah, yeah. Murder was planned. Okay, let's save here just to be. to optimize ourselves, right? Uh, let's see what we got here. Murder was playing the rubber gloves, prove it. Goodman's ID doesn't refute that. King of Prosecutor's Trophy doesn't refute that. Edgeworth's knife. No prints, that is correct. So that's in line with the uh, stuff. Uh, parking stub doesn't make any difference. Blue Badger panel doesn't make any difference. One knife wound died within an hour and a half. Doesn't make any difference. Goodman's note doesn't make any difference as far as I know. Cell phone. Last call made to her sister Emma at 518 on the day of the murder. Maybe the phone? Man, what a boring strap. What's wrong with it? Everyone has different tastes, you know. Here, check out mine. It's a pink princess strap. These are hard to come by, you know. I see the series is as popular as ever with the kids. I just like redial the number in court real quick. There's no need to push this again. What's wrong? You look like I do during finals. Never mind. It's nothing. I guess it's not this. Well, it it could still be that. Murder was playing the rubber gloves. Prove it. Well, the floor plans wouldn't prove. Wait a sec. A is for prosecutors. B is for visitors and detectives. Is it also is it for de is B for detectives as well? I don't remember if they said that. If that's true, then she wouldn't have premeditated a murder during a place where the dude wouldn't have been cuz he couldn't go there. Let's give it a shot. Just kidding. Fine. Fine, you don't have to say anything, okay? I get it. You just want to fling me around like I'm a toupee that doesn't belong on somebody's head. Fine! 100% okay with it. It's gotta be the phone, then. It has to be the phone. It's not the phone. I'm so upset, but it's not the phone. 
we can prove that it wasn't planned. And the only way to prove it is using this statement. Hmm. If it was planned, why would she leave Goodman's ID on the ground? If it was planned, why would she leave the knife in the trunk? If it was planned... Well, that doesn't make any difference. Let's try the knife. There we go. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. Oh yeah, if the murder was planned... Well, it was then the point to frame Edgeworth. It, well, I guess we can call that into question. What's with this case? Huh! Oh, the bloody murder weapon! <laughs> A red car! <laughs> All belonging to the prosecutor there? Oh my god, it's off and off. what's happening? Oh my god, you want to go out later? Mommy, your prosecutor's bad people? Let me get The defense has a request. Dude, why are there fucking five-year-olds in this courtroom right now? Mommy, why am I here? Why did you take me? Why are you such a terrible mother? The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Skye planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing, the murder weapon? Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon! Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, oh, this case has suddenly take a turn. Mommy, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> order, order, order. Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. B but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah! The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Skye, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove, nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now? But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned! If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness... Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you! My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated! Really now? Lana Skye intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Oh, that's false. That's false. That's an easy one. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? <laughs> ah, that's not bad. In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Ooh, I don't even need any pressing help. I just need you to get to the part where you say something really fucking stupid, dude. Ready for it? Ready for it? There it is! Victim's autopsy report, one knife wound! You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that! Are you testing me? Then I'll test you! With my moss surprise! I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. Yeah. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. 
The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! You're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth! What a hunk! He's my hero, really! What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness... You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Testify. Testify! Her red muffler looked like... Mu what the fuck is a muffler? Dude, I don't even know what that is. What is a muffler? Am I gonna get fucked again because I don't know what a muffler is? Oh, man. Cars have mufflers. I didn't know people did. What is a muffler? You talking about headphones? You talking about earbuds? You talking about a scarf? Ear muffs? Her red muffler. Let me look at this picture. What the hell is a muffler? Would this picture prove that yet again? Oh wow! I'm so good by accident! Miss Star, I demand an explanation! The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. Oh, so they mean... Okay. So, okay, yeah, alright. Friggin' localization. <laughs> and you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But, but that that can't be! Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? But it was there! A scarf! Uh, no, not that. Uh, but something red! Uh, really? Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. <coughs> Might be it. Yep. <coughs> Alright, we're good. The most important part... The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Dude, you're not, you're not a detective. You can't arrest people. Ah, uh, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. What, you made a citizen's arrest? I mean, I guess that's a thing, but... You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Uh, an oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. A rawr. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Oh, wait, are you going to talk about that oil drum stuff again? There was an oil drum kicked over, but then where's the oil? Because there wasn't any. Was it empty? The suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I mean, let's just go press and stuff again. So where is this partition on the floor plans? 
I am sure she means this wall next to the car. Ooh! Wrong! You're- there's a fence blocking you, you can't get in there, bitch! Ah, got you again! That's right! There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained the right store, and arrested her on the spot. Bullshit, and I'm not even... Uh, going to save, because I don't need to. What?! What do you mean she was on the other side of the fence?! She was on the other side of the fence! She was on the other side! <laughs> Then how'd you take a photograph? With a photograph? Cancel that? This photo's been canceling like every other thing. No, alright, fine. Oh, God. Dude, that should be open and shut. How is that not the case? How's the floor? You're on the other side of a fence. You can't just catch up to her. What else do you- what, am I supposed to use that somewhere else? Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. What muffler? There is no muffler! I mean, I wouldn't have thought, but like... Also, that's not e even hardly the most important detail. Oh, God. Mention the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star resistance. Is this when we use the floor plan against you? Alright, good. I would have been mad because that would have been dumb. Uh, fine, let's just press stuff again then. I thought we had an easy win here. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details? Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. Oh, is she gonna revise her testimony and then we use it? We already, we're already there, man. I'm just ahead of the curve, all right? The lunch lamb car was... Ooh, I, oh no, that's a different car? Okay. She was a visitor, thus she was parked in... Oh, she was a visitor, thus she was parked in B-Block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes that's right. But there was a chain-link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing, the cough-up queen, lunch lady athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. Hmm. All right. So how did Miss Sky not get away? She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I had remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Cheeky. You're a cheeky bastard, aren't you? Oh, you're so cheeky. Cheeky. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? 
My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma, Emma at 5.18. But Emma says that she didn't say anything. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall but had to use her cell instead. That's... you can't see that from where you are. You can't see that from where you were as you were climbing over a fence. You could not see past a solid partition to see someone attempt to use an out-of-order phone. Error. Error. Objection. Your Honor. This is bullshit. Oh yeah! Now it works! Okay! Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Skye. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago! Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up! <clears throat> Let's look at the four plans. Floor plans, the rather. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true... You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call! Yeah. <clears throat> I, b I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B-Block, you couldn't have seen it! Oh, mommy, I really need to go to the bathroom. Stop making me hold it! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies! Gah. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. Oh, then we better save. The witness lied about where she saw it, right? Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean... Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed this crime was here. I would say security room. No. Because she wouldn't have seen all this car action. If she was from the security room. Unless she could see above the partition. I'm not sure if she could see above the partition though. Can I just say A block? If she was here, she could see the emergency phone. That's true. That solves the mystery. That would allow her to see the emergency phone, yes. But if she was there, she would have been able to arrest her well before she dialed her cell phone. Oh. God damn it. So it was the security room then? Where she saw it, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, it won't let me save here, so. Security room? I just, I don't know how tall this partition is. I feel like it wasn't that tall. Maybe you could have seen it from the security room. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, okay, you can see above it too. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime in the back of the partition is here. Alright, that's gonna do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Simbertabano, and I'll see you guys next time.